The previous speaker mentioned that we should know our audience, and so I know my audience. I'm speaking to WordPress enthusiasts. At the same time, I'm also speaking to planners, to people who work in the field that I'm looking forward to being a part of when I graduate from Rutgers. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> I had to qualify what I'm going to say. So that's where the introduction came from. Last year, I presented at WordCamp US on how I engaged my community on planning issues through blogging on WordPress. At the same time, I took a course in public participation in the planning process. It was a natural step for me in my education. I learned what government agency, agencies must adhere to when engaging with the public on their planning efforts. Government agencies with planning departments need not fear using WordPress CMS. In fact, they can embrace it. They can easily integrate the custom tools created in-house and still fulfill the legal requirements they must follow to engage the public. Let me share with you my lessons from the classroom. <sighs> Planners, we can enhance our effectiveness by using WordPress CMS in our public engagement efforts. I'm not here to sell your product. I'm here to share with you how to use a powerful digital tool efficiently and effectively. The Blaustein School encourages us to pursue internships in our concentrations. My interest is in transit-oriented development, and both my internships have been transportation-related. I can only speak to what I know. The course I took last year was focused on a group project. Our client was the Regional Metropolitan Planning Organization. We were tasked with writing a new public participation plan for them and asked to create two unique public engagement activities to engage millennials as a, and a group of our choice. We were taught to identify our goals and to know what we're legally mandated to do for our activities. Now, the U.S. Department of Transportation legally mandates that transportation agencies follow specific involvement guidelines. Here are several. Events must be held at physically accessible locations for people with disabilities. Materials should be translated into other languages for those with limited English proficiency. Events must be open to the public and held at convenient times and locations. Public information should be electronically accessible. We were asked to pinpoint sources of inspiration, and I drew from mine. My group activity involved going to a college to speak with millennials about how they access how they access their classes. Um, I decided that I would create a WordPress blog as a deliverable for a project. When we were on campus, we asked the students that we engaged with, how do they get to their classes? We found out that students actually use Uber um, not only to get to classes within the towns that they live in, but to actually access classes from other counties. It's important for us to in for us to pinpoint the sources of our inspiration, and mine was WordPress. We're told that we should look internally for best practices when we engage the communities that we serve. And so one method for, um, for internally looking for best practices is to decide what projects have worked effectively in the communities that we serve. And you know, these aren't necessarily projects that uh, other agencies have used. They're projects that we have used and we've been able to reach larger groups of people. We have been able to get people to comment on the projects that we're working on. It's important for us to have a standard communication strategy that's approved. A lot of planning agencies have communication departments. 
there's specific languages, um, rather there's specific terms that we should use, there's language that we should keep in mind. And so when we create our activities, we're not starting from scratch. It's important to do more than just collect public comments. When we do our public engagement projects, we're there to share the information that we know, educate the public about the transportation options they have, and empower them to know how to access the resources and to know what we're there to do, which is to serve them. Now, how can we do this? We can use WordPress CMS, Content Management System. Okay. WordPress can be simple. It's quickly intuitive and it's software that we can use for digital content online. WordPress has powerful analytics. We can use it to understand the people that we serve, and WordPress is highly customizable. It has a vast repository of themes and plugins to quickly tailor how you visually display department projects. In this room, we have developers, we have people who create themes, and we have people who create plugins. We know, as a community, what accessibility means. We create themes and plugins that people with disabilities can access. And as planners, the projects that we present also have to be accessible to people with disabilities. At the same time, I think that a lot of the projects we present online need to be responsive. We have to get responsive. By that I mean, when we put our surveys online, on a WordPress website, for example, we should, do, we should choose responsive themes. Now, within the planning field, we engage um, underserved communities, low-income individuals, as well as upper-income individuals. And many of us know about the digital divide. They're lower income individuals who, who have access to smartphones and they can access planning information. We have, upper in we have upper income individuals who have tablets and they can also access the information that we have to share. And most people have access to a desktop, whether it's a library or at home. So I think as planners that we should extend um, how we communicate information outside of just uh, meeting ADA requirements, but to also consider providing content on sites that are responsive so that we meet the needs of lower income individuals and we also meet the needs of people who can access everything that we have to share easily. Now, let me talk about why I think WordPress is so great. I created a blog um, to engage residents in my community on planning issues. And on my site, I used WordPress software to, um, I used WordPress software with surveys to ask residents about how they use transportation locally. WordPress allows us to embed documents and though I didn't do that for my blog, the site that I created as a deliverable for the course that I took had a pamphlet on it and it had information about the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Now, not only can we embed surveys and documents, but we can also embed really effective programs that explain and show the projects that we work on. Currently, I'm working at an agency looking at how to use street design methods to decrease crashes that happen with pedestrians and cyclists on the road. We use these methods as a means of protecting people. And many of us use street mix in order to show um, ourselves within the agencies and the people that we engage what streets can look like, how we can increase um, roads, how we can add bike lanes, and really just to provide a visual that makes it possible for the people that we serve to see how we can improve um, the environment that they walk around and bike in. <laughs> okay, 
I know this is a little boring for those of you who, you know, um, might not be interested in the field of planning. Um, so bear with me a little bit. In WordPress sites, we can also embed Google Maps. Google Maps allow us to share information um, through uh, crowdsourcing. Uh, individuals who come to our sites can leave comments, um, for example, on a particular road that they traveled on where they almost got you know, struck by a car, a crash that they saw happen. And so not only can you embed surveys and pamphlets and images of what safer streets look like, not only can you embed maps that allow for crowdsourcing, but you can also embed maps that show where concentrations of crashes happen, for example. On WordPress, it's very easy to add different types of media. It's very easy to add images, pictures, videos, surveys. We can add icons for our social media accounts. And we have developers here who create plugins that make it possible for us to show information on the social media feeds that we use. WordPress itself integrates not just content that's created through images and videos, but what we're sharing on social media. Now, planners use different programs to reach the audiences that we serve. We use AutoCAD to design streets so that what we create on the ground actually meets specifications that are, um, that are outlined by um, the Federal Highway Administration so that uh, the curbs that we design are um, accurate um, so that when we suggest that we do a curb extension, um, a truck can easily pass through the streets and at the same time we can make it possible for people to get um, from home to school, work safely. AutoCAD is one so software that we use and it has an extensive community of people who share the information that they know to help us design um, street improvements that are accurate. Planners also use Adobe Creative Suite. We use Photoshop to design simulations. We use InDesign to, to design documents that share um, the information that we'd like to educate people with, um, information that can empower people uh, to make um, safe transportation, transportation choices. Uh, we use Google SketchUp and SketchUp allows us to create massings um, that allow people to see how we can redesign um, and envision safer streets. We use AutoCAD, we use Photoshop, we use InDesign, and we use Google SketchUp. And we can also use WordPress. WordPress has a large community that shares the information that it knows, as each of you do. We use WordPress.com, we use WordPress.org. We ask questions, we offer advice, we offer each other solutions and best practices. We show people how to use our plugins and our themes, and we recommend how people can become better bloggers. And so planners should not just utilize communities for Autodesk and Adobe Creative Suite, even SketchUp. They can also utilize the WordPress community to share the content online that educates and empowers the people that we serve. Thank you.